And for some analysis, I have with me Tyson Barker. He's the program director of the Aspen Institute Germany here in Berlin. Welcome to you. Now, we heard Donald Trump say that he's changed his policy towards Syria. Was he just reacting to a tragic incident which he said has crossed many, many lines? Or does this mark a significant shift in policy, do you think? Well, I think one thing that we have to note is the qualitative difference from what he was saying to yesterday and what, he was, what the administration was saying last week. I mean, this is a massive rhetorical escalation of, of policy here, and I think that it has to be followed with steps, particularly when you give the echoes of 2013 and what the Obama administration did with its red line. I think that two things were impacting him in this case. One was the images themselves. I mean, these images have the ability to really, just the, the children in these situations to affect people, and you could hear it. He was personally touched and affected. Uh, when he was speaking in the Rose Garden. And the other has been his meetings with uh, Middle Eastern leaders this week. He met with King Abdullah from Jordan. Jordan is a country that's taken two million Syrian refugees into its country. Um, so I think that he's also hearing this behind closed doors from leaders, that this is a humanitarian crisis that is ongoing and it requires U.S. action. So you're saying that rhetorical escalation could also mean a significant change of policy. Now, we heard uh, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, talk about, you know, America going it alone on Syria if others don't join in. Could that mean a military option there? In democracies, the first thing that you have to do when you're talking about this kind of dramatic intervention, even if it includes military intervention, is prepare the public for that kind of action. So this rhetorical escalation could be followed by some kind of policy escalation, including military intervention, and both Nikki Haley and President Trump have clearly put this option on the table. Tyson Bach, I'm going to discuss a broader foreign policy issues, but, uh, but first let's take a look at another report. Now, these developments uh, come against the backdrop of an overall of the National Security Council by President Trump. This includes the removal of senior strategist Steve Bannon from the National Security Council. His appointment had been controversial because it gave Bannon an unprecedented role in security discussions. Steve Bannon is a longtime Trump insider, his senior strategist and close advisor on many political matters. He now appears to have lost some of his influence. Bannon once managed the populist right-wing website Breitbart News. His appointment to the National Security Council sparked controversy, including among Republicans. Critics feared it would politicize the council, the main group advising the president on foreign affairs and national security. They also pointed out he had little experience in those fields. I'm grateful to you for that opportunity. His removal appears to be a victory for this man, Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster. He's a relative newcomer to Trump's team. Since becoming National Security Advisor in February, he's pushed for a more traditional, nonpartisan council. The White House denies the move is a demotion for Bannon, but it will only fuel the talk of infighting that has plagued Trump's administration. And returning to Tyson Abaka from the Aspen Institute here in uh, Berlin. Um, Tyson, what do you make of Bannon's removal from the National Security Council? It was a very controversial appointment in the first place. Right. I think that what we're seeing is uh, a demotion of a particular wing within the White House, the Bannon alt-right populist wing. There are several wings that we've all made note of, the GOP establishment wing, the national security hawk wing, which seems to be on the ascendancy, and you see that in McMaster. He's staffing up the National Security Council for the first time, removing a lot of the people who are appointed under Mike Flynn, um, and putting in more traditional internationalist voices. So the demotion of Steve Bannon is the latest in this, in this uh, string of events that have been taking place in past weeks. So what is, are the implications for foreign policy uh, as a result of these changes? Well, we're already seeing a couple of these. First of all, we're seeing a much more activist foreign policy. We have three big meetings this week with three major leaders, including with Xi Jinping tomorrow in, in Florida. Um, and we have a bigger, more adult consideration of major issues, including North Korea and Syria. So it seems like, in some ways, some in Washington would say the adults are taking over.
And there are also those who argue that American foreign policy under Trump so far has been on drift because of this infighting within the National Security Council. So are you expecting more decisive action on foreign policy with these changes? Clearly, it's been very erratic. Um, and to the extent that policy is personnel, we're seeing a shift in personnel, and we can expect to see a shift in policy. We're already seeing that in the rhetoric, as we just mentioned. And I think with uh, Xi Jinping's visit and a lot of discussion of North Korea and trade tomorrow, the Pacific uh, flank of the United States foreign policy, we're going to see that continue. Right. Tyson Barker, Program Director at the Aspen Institute, Germany. Thank you very much for your analysis.